All right, what's up guys, it's Farkas here, and um, I'm finally doing that editing tutorial video right now, and I just got a ton of requests to do this specific photo here. Um, a little info about the photo itself is I took this in my first week in New York. I was hanging out with my friend Michael, and we went to the Brooklyn Bridge, and we just got there right after this huge rainstorm, but these clouds opened up and the sun came out right behind the buildings, and I mean, it just created these amazing colors, these amazing light rays here, you can see them, and I mean, it was just a, an amazing day, and I had a lot of fun editing this photo specifically. Um, I took it with my Canon 7D, which is my old camera. I actually got a, a new camera pretty recently. But, uh, I mean, if you're not familiar with the camera, it's a cropped frame sensor. It's actually pretty old. It's like from freaking 2000, and, I want to say like 2012, 2013. Like, it's an old camera, you know. It's not that great, not that capable. But it just shows, for example, that you could really do anything with any kind of camera. You don't need some, like, $4,000 camera to get some amazing photos. Um, you could, you know, really kill the game with a freaking Canon T5i. Like, really, anything's possible. Um, another thing, guys, like, thank you so much for watching this video. And... Really thank you for all the support and shit, you know, like I'm happy to do this for you guys because when I was starting up I had no idea how to edit, I had no idea how to use Lightroom and you know a lot of the people that I looked up to on Instagram They never fucking responded to me. They never responded to my DMs, never helped me out So I really don't want to be that guy. I want to help you guys out. I want to really boost your editing game and boost your um, Shooting game. So if you guys have any, any questions afterwards any follow-up questions Feel free to DM me feel free to comment on the video and I'll try to get back to you about it But anyways, getting back to the photo I'm gonna reset it right now so you could really see you know how it looks before and after and we can definitely start from the beginning and I'll take you through every step so just keep this in mind and I'm gonna click the reset button and BAM already it just looks completely different you know it's off center the colors are all wacky it's super dark over here way overexposed here and you can already tell it needs a lot of work so the first thing I like to do is adjust the framing of the photo I like to make it you know a little centered a little straightened and I like to just really get that symmetry done so I'm gonna bring this up here Use this tool, straighten out just a little bit, and yeah. Already it almost looks like a completely different photo just from that. You know, your framing and your composition, you should keep in mind while you're shooting, really makes all the difference when you're editing your photo afterwards and your final product. It's going to come out. Symmetry is a really huge component, and even not, like, asymmetrical photos also add some sort of really dope style to it. Just want to keep in mind that when you're shooting, you know, be assertive when you're taking your photos, really angle your camera in the way that you want to see it happen. And what I like to do first is I have a preset base, which is going to help me um, overexpose the foreground, which is dark, and underexpose the background, which is overexposed. So I'm going to do that through my gradient filter. I'm going to drag this down so it covers the entirety of the photo up here. I'll bring this down here so it's not really in the way anymore. But basically this is going to allow me to you know, have an evenly exposed photo and you know, really bring out the detail in all parts of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is adjust the highlights because right here it's way, way too bright and I wanna bring that down so you can see the clouds, see the colors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring this down and I wanna bring it to negative 80. I have a rule for myself where I don't go below you know, um, negative 90 or I don't go above positive 90 for any parts of these, you know, whether it's exposure, uh, clarity, saturation, just because I feel like it overprocesses the photo. So we're going to start by leaving it at negative 83 or, you know, anywhere in there, like negative 80, I want to say like a negative 81 and we can always come back to it later, you know, but I like to, you know, get this set up, get that base. And if I feel like it needs adjusting later on, I'll come back to it. And then from here we have our sky, but I want to bring this up too, because it's way too dark. So then we're going to do that with our shadows right over here. So just like we went to negative 80, I'm going to go up to positive 80 and bam. Yeah. So already here we have you know an evenly exposed background. I'm sorry, an evenly exposed foreground and an evenly exposed background, but it looks a bit flat. So to bring out that detail there, we're gonna go down to our clarity tool. I'm gonna bring that to you know a quarter up around 20. Let's say like 20. Oops, that's too much. I'm gonna do 25. Yeah. And so there, we got a really nice look to it, um, but it still needs some work, obviously. But I'm gonna click done on my gradient filter tool. I'm gonna go back to my main editing tab. And here we are. So I like to look at the color first, but I think so far right now we have a pretty good base in terms of color. And again, we go to come back to it later. We feel like it needs some altering, but I want to go back to my highlights one more time and I'm gonna bring those down, not too dramatically because we just touched those up, but I'm going to say maybe negative 35 is a good start. Cause I still feel like this is a little too bright, but now with the negative highlights, 
comes a little bit better. A little bit more detail up here, a little bit more color. And you know, you can really see the light rays up here and the clouds down here. And we're gonna bring those up a little bit more later on through another tool that I'll, cut to, that I'll touch up on. But I like to leave that for last. Um, again, I wanna bring up my shadows one more time. Cause I feel like it's still a little too dark here. So I'm gonna say like positive 85. It's a pretty good start. And then um, again, it still has that flat look, but I'm still getting that exposure done. So I'm gonna go back to my clarity one more time and I bring that up probably around halfway. I wanna say like maybe 57. Don't wanna to go too much because then it's gonna look over processed like I said, but we still have that detail and we have that nice look. But to counteract that flatness to it, I like to touch up on my vibrance. You know, there's a lot of debate between whether or not we should touch vibrancy and I have a lot of friends that actually bring the vibrancy down and they mess with the saturation instead. But I personally just prefer to bring up the vibrance to, you know, maybe 25 to 35. I'm gonna drop it at 33 right now. And it really brings out that color, really makes it look nice. And I just love how that looks. So here um, is our tone curve, but I'm gonna leave that to last. It's something I like to really like, touch up at the end. It lets me know if I need to adjust any more colors because it really brings out the final touches of the photo. So like I said, we'll come back to that in the end. And the same with the colors. What we're gonna do now is go down to our primary colors because that's what's really gonna help me bring out these oranges, bring out these blues and make those sort of personal touches that people always say like, wow, like you have such a unique look to yourself. You know, like how do you make your photos look so orange or so red or so turquoise? That's all through the blue primaries right here. So I'm gonna bring down my saturation in the blue primary, but not too much. I'm gonna say negative 41 is a good start. I'm gonna counteract that by bringing down the uh, hue of the blue primary as well. It's gonna make this look a little pinker and this a little more turquoise. So with that, I'm gonna do this real quick. And we're ending at say negative 38. And already this is looking really great here with these colors a little bit different than before, but we're still not done yet. I wanna make this a little bit more a little bit more warm and this a little bit colder. And I don't know if you guys remember, but if you look in the top left part of the screen from the original edit, you can definitely see that you know really difference in color, that really prominent change between warm and cold. So I'm gonna go back up here to my top and I'm gonna mess around with the gradient filter one more time. Click on that, I'm gonna swipe from left to right. It's gonna determine the left part. Swipe from left to right, and that's gonna make the left side of the screen a little bit more warmer. So as you can see, red lights, the red side is the part that's gonna be highlighted, the part that's gonna be you know altered in color. And I'm gonna take this temperature here and bring it up to I wanna say around you know maybe 60 to 75. Let's drop it at 72. Eh, actually, not too much. 70. I don't know if you guys noticed, but. I really don't like this transition in color. You know, it's super, um, super intense. It's like almost sloppy, really noticeable. And I wanna, you know, feather that out, make it a little bit smoother. So to do that, I'll widen the graduated filter, make that transition a little bit more smooth, a little bit more seamless. Again, I wanna make this straight and bam, there's that really nice transition. And it looks hella dope. And I love that look to it. I love that style. But there's one more thing I wanna touch up on our tone curve and our colors. So like I said, I'll leave the tone curve till last and we're gonna touch up the colors. And I really don't do much here. I'm gonna bring up the saturation, like maybe plus 20 on the red, I'm sorry, plus 20 on the red. And then maybe what, like plus 10 on the orange. And I'm actually gonna bring the yellow down a little bit. And again, guys, I don't really have like a set formula. I'm literally just doing what I think looks appealing to my eyes. I'm down a little bit more, negative 21. And green, I don't like greens. Just bring that down a little bit. And in terms of our blue, I think the blues are pretty good. I really never touch purple and magenta. And for the most part, that's looking pretty dope. One last thing I like to touch up though are um, is the sky. And a lot of people always ask like, dude, how do you get your clouds to look so dope? How do you get your sky to look so different? And that's literally all done through my dehazing tool and my tone curve tool, which I'm gonna show you later. But I'm gonna slide from up to down and this tone curve is gonna take up, you know, the upper part of the screen. It's a little more feathered. And I'm gonna just, you know, really just put a little bit of dehazing on here, like maybe like 20, yeah, leave it at 20. And already you can see like the clouds are a little more prominent. There aren't really many clouds in the sky, so you don't really see that transition too much, but already the clouds, the color, really bit, you know, brings it out more. And I'm click done there, and there, like that's just an amazing, amazing change from the before and the after. 
And uh, lastly, I'm just gonna touch up the tone curve. Really not gonna do much to this photo. Maybe bring this up just a little bit. I like to keep like a little bit of an S form when I'm doing my tone curve. Maybe bring this down a tad right here and then bring this up a little bit right here. But again, super, super subtle. But yeah, pretty much that's the end products. And I'll show you the before and after one more time, but you know, really like editing is such a huge component of taking photos and you know, posting your photos and all that kind of shit. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot that's possible with Lightroom. And yeah, um, you know, leave a comment if you guys have any more questions. If you guys like the video, let me know. But um, you have any more photos you want me to do, maybe later in the week I could do another tutorial, another similar thing. But yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys.